Hey friends, it's Lisa. Welcome and thank you for watching another one of my videos. So today's video is a talking video. I don't have any products to haul or show you, but I just wanted to share um, something that I think is kind of cool for me. I recently had a birthday, which if you watched my June candle picks video, you knew I was all about June because it was my birthday month and I was living it up with my best life candle picks, which I did. But um, right after I had my birthday, I started thinking about the year. Um, I'm fortunate that my birthday falls in the middle of the year, so it's kind of spread out from I do celebrate Christmas, so I get Christmas in December, and I get my birthday in June. And it's also for me a time to refresh and think about new goals. I don't make resolutions, but um, I was thinking, what do I want to do in my next year before my next birthday? So I was sitting there, started writing some ideas. Now I didn't make a list of the number of ideas for my, like for each year. So if I'm X years old, then um, you know there was that many ideas um, because I'm not an overachiever like that. But I did make some goals and I just wanted to share them with you because I think they're kind of cool. And plus it's also accountability because I want to do at least a couple of them. So I actually wrote them down. This is my Erin Condren on the go folio. I have um, some planners and I also have some notebooks. I lovingly call this my workhorse because it's kind of just, um, it's got my daily stuff in it and then it's also a bucket list or, or like dumping grounds for everything. So things to do when I'm blank years old. So the first one is visit a new state capital. One of my life bucket lists is to visit all 50 state capitals. And when I say visit, visit all 50 state capitals, I'm actually talking about physically seeing and visiting the capital building itself. I love geography. I'm obsessed with geography. I have been since I was a kid. Um, you know, it's just one of my passions. And I also love architecture. Now, I'm not good with architecture. I can't tell you, you know, this is, you know, this is Art Deco. Well, I can tell you it's Art Deco, but this is this and this is that and this is, you know, all this different stuff, but I appreciate it. And so for me, capital buildings are the marriage of geography and architecture. And so as of this video, let me step back for a second. I decided I wanted to do this in 2010 as a life list. So I decided that anything that I had visited prior to 2010, so any field trips, any vacations when I was a child, didn't count. No, 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 didn't count. So from 2010 on, I started a new list. And since then, I have visited 11 capitals. And so one of the things I wanted to do is visit a new state capital this year. I have it a pretty good idea of where I want to go and visit. So um, we'll see if that happens. Next one is travel to a new, well, uh, the next one is travel internationally. Um, I've traveled pretty extensively throughout the United States and I have traveled to a different to a few different countries, but I'm not like a like some people seem like they go on vacations and they travel and they go here and you know, it's like unfortunately, even though I would love that to be my life, that's really not who I am and I kind of want to um I want to get back into, you know, traveling. So I would love to travel internationally this year. With traveling internationally, I would love to travel to a new country, some place that I've never been before. I've never crossed an ocean, you know, I've never been to Europe, I've never been to Asia. Um, the furthest south I've ever been was Belize in Central America. So I get kind of frustrated because I think Central America is still considered North America. So I don't think I can say that I've been to another continent. So it's like really something that I would love to go and visit another continent. Um, but I would love to visit, uh, visit a new country. The next one is archery lessons. So ever since I was a little kid, I've always wanted to shoot a bow. Now my father has bows and he apparently before I was born and when I was an infant, he used to bow hunt. I 
never would want to kill anything unless it's a spider and that mfr is getting shot right in the middle between its four you know its eight eyes like psh. but other than that um i would love to learn how to properly shoot a bow you know like gina davis ended up in the olympics because she decided one day that she wanted to shoot a bow and it was like girl you're gina davis but she could do whatever she wants um but yeah, I would love to learn how to shoot a bow, and it would just be for target practice. I wouldn't be um, killing anything. But I've, I've shot him a few times in my life, in my backyard, um, at a range a couple times, and it's just something that I would love to take up. The next thing that I have is take a dance class. So even though I have crippling social anxiety, I love dancing. Like, I love to dance. I love, like, I, I can't even explain it. But I usually don't because I'm constantly worried about the thoughts of every other person and my perception of what they're perceiving and then going in that dark spiral. But I do, like, I do feel comfortable if I'm in an environment where you know, like if I'm in a class and everybody else is learning, then I'm going to be learning. And so I would love to take, <laughs> I was explaining to someone, I'm like, I want to do an adult dance class, but I'm like, no, 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 not like pole dancing or anything like that, but all, but there's nothing wrong with that. Like that, that's fine. I did it once for a bachelorette party and man, it kills your arms. But like, uh, you know, like I would love to do like, like a hip hop or like funk type of class. I think that would be so much fun. The next thing actually shouldn't be that surprising considering that one of my passions um, here on YouTube is sharing my candles that I pick out for the month. But the next one is learning how to make my own candles. And I mean legitimately make a candle, not melt down a candle that I've already burned and kind of just, you know, make a candle that way. Like I want to pick out the container, I want to, you know, really think about the types of wax that I want to use, I want to make my own, you know, scent blend, or at least pick the scents, I want to learn how to use dyes, and maybe make colored candles, I want to seriously learn how to make an actual candle, and I'm not thinking of, oh, I want to make a business one day, it's nothing like that like this would be purely for me but it's just something that I've really thought about and I really want to do and so I'm surprised I haven't done it earlier in my life but it's something that I would love to do this year the next one has to do with another hobby of mine and that is chest hooping and what I mean by that is that I hula hoop hoop dance um, practice flow, whatever you want to call it. I had always wanted to hula hoop and it wasn't until 2017 when I found a hula hoop class, a hoop dance class. And I walked in there with my hula hoop because I had bought one um, years earlier. And I walked in and I was like, I do not know how to hula hoop. Like I could not keep it up. So now I can waist hoop and I've been taking, well, I took classes for a while when I lived in New York and I've taken a class, um, last fall here in Pennsylvania and then I just follow tutorials and things through either YouTube or Instagram but I I really just like going in my backyard um and just kind of doing my thing because it's it feels good it makes me happy it burns calories and um it's just I don't know it's just something I like to do. Um, but my point is on here as I would love to like shoulder and chest hoop so I can waist hoop. And I just found out recently I can neck hoop, which is awesome. Um, I can elbow, I can hoop on my elbow and stuff like that. Um, but I would love to just be able to shoulder and chest hoop. And also there is a move that uh, is called uh, breaks and paddles where you're constantly moving the hoop with your arms and you're basically if you're going like this with your arms and the hoop is like and I wish I had a better example you know you could always google it or go on YouTube but it is something that I would love to learn how to do and 
I try it now because it takes practice. It's not like you're going to learn it on day one. And I look ridiculous. Um, but maybe one day I will be a master of the breaks and hoops or breaks and paddles in, in chest hooping. And so the next four are kind of just random ones that I were thinking about. Um, so I wrote, have house plants. I don't have a green thumb. I don't have plants, with the exception of at work, somebody was giving up an avocado tree and I took it and it's on my desk. His name is Avi. And I think Avi's dying and I don't know because I'm following the directions that I was given to give Avi his best life and Avi is just not having it. So um, I actually got this book, How to Raise a Plant and Make It Love You Back. And it's basically, it was like, I, I was flipping through it at a store and I just fell in love with it because it gave you like, like, Monstera? Or this is the one I want to get, the Oxtalis Triangularis, which is also known as the Purple Shamrock because I just, I love that it's purple and I love that it's triangular um, and I just think it's so freaking cool. So I would love to get some plants and not kill them. And I have a lot of friends who are very plant-oriented people, so I think that if I actually got one, I would have plenty of resources who would help me not kill it. So I would love that. Um, the next one says, finish cleaning dining room. And that doesn't mean anything to anyone else but me, but when I moved back, which actually July 1st is my two-year anniversary from moving back from New York, so woohoo! Um, I used my dining room kind of as like a staging area and a storage place where it was stuff that I didn't want out in the garage, but I didn't have room for it either in my office, which is this room, or my bedroom. And so I have like a bookshelf and I have some like totes and stuff um, up against the wall. And I've done like a really great job of kind of moving this stuff along, you know, either keeping, donating, trashing, so much of the stuff. But it will mean so much for me mentally, I guess, for what all of, like, that whole dining room area stands for. Um, it would do so much for me mentally once it's all cleaned up. So I um, want to finish that, and that is a goal for this year. The next two are things that are just really um, things I would like to do because why not? So the first one is try a Reiki session. Now I am a huge fan of ASMR and one of the things that it's a big theme is Reiki sessions like energy pulling and your chakras and things like that and I think it's really cool. Um, actually a few years prior though before I got into watching ASMR I actually went to a night school class for Reiki and there was a Reiki, uh, Reiki master and we, um, you know, after I finished the class, like it was about a six session class, I got a certificate or something and, you know, it wasn't that I was a Reiki master, but it was just like the beginning of Reiki and so um, I would love to get it done on myself you know, to really see if it makes a difference. I think it does. I would think it does, but um, I would love to go to a professional. So I've been researching that. I know someone, one of my friends, who has actually gone to a Reiki professional and really believes in it, so I would love to try that. And the last thing I have on my list is floating. Now, what I mean by floating is salt bath floating. Um, they're kind of relatively new in my area. There's a few places that have them, like float, float spas, and there's actually one right around the corner from my work. So I'm like, gonna get to it before, um, you know, I miss my opportunity. But um, it basically is, you go in these rooms, and there's these tanks, and because it's made out of salt water, you can't sink. You float, and some of them say they have lights, and then some of them say they turn the lights off. But basically, there might be some soothing music, or it might be like completely silent. It's kind of like your preference. 
but it's the sensory depri <laughs> deprivation um, kind of experience and you know you might go for 60 minutes or 90 minutes but a lot of the the reviews and the feedbacks that I've read say it feels like like two minutes like you're gonna be in there for 90 minutes and it feels like it was like two minutes it just goes by so fast and you're really like you're like calm and you know it's just an experience and so I could either totally love it or I could totally hate it but I won't know until I try and so I wrote it down on my list because why not it's my list so do you see this adorable pillow my friends bought me for my birthday I know this is like not part of like my list but it's pretty much my dog and a beautiful yellow umbrella which is perfect because I love yellow and it's so freaking cute I love it so that was the list of things that I have decided that I would love to try to accomplish before my next birthday in June of 2020. If you liked this video or found any information helpful, please think about giving this video a thumbs up and subscribing. And until next time, I hope you all stay well. Bye!